page number 49, Mufti Shafi Uthmani, the father of Mufti Taqi Uthmani, regarding the verse, he says, Hadith authority Ibn Abi Hatim reports on the basis of a narration from Am Amash that in only one single period, the last period of the people of Bani Israel, which extends from Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, 1,000 prophets were sent to Bani Israel. The second blessing mentioned in the verse quoted immediately above is a material blessing, that is, they were made masters and wielders of power. The hint given here is that the people of Bani Israel, who were the oppressed slaves of the Pharaoh and his people for many ages, Destroyed their enemies and how they themselves were made masters and kings. Noteworthy here is the statement about prophets where it was said, Ja'ala fikum anbiya. He made prophets from among you, which carries the same sense, the se which carries the sense that the whole people were not prophets. And this is the truth as prophets are only a few, while the large body of the people follows them but when it comes to the subject of temporal power <coughs> or on countries and states <coughs> said there was and made you kings the outward sense of which is that they all were made kings the Arabic word muluk used in the text is a plural of Malik which means a king in common usage obviously when a whole people cannot be all prophets no people of a country can be all kings what happens is that authority in a country rests in the hands of an individual or some individuals while the rest of the people are subordinate to them but here the words of the Quran are attributing kingship to them one reason for this is what has been stated by Maulana Ashraf Ali Thanavi, with, with, with reference to some righteous elders in his Tafsir Bayanul Quran, that is, the sovereignty of the king of a country is customarily attributed to his entire people. For example, during the middle centuries of Islam, the government was called as that of Umayyids and Abbasids. <coughs> Similarly, the rule of Ghaznavis and Ghauris, then that of Mughals, and after that, the rule of the British in India was attributed to all individuals of the entire people of that country. Therefore, a whole people having a ruler are known by proxy to be rulers of that country. It was according to this usage that the Quran has attributed kingship to the whole people of Bani Israel. In this, there may be a hint that an Islamic state is really run by a government of the people. It is the people who have the right to elect their Amir, Imam, leader or ruler. And it is once again the right of the people who can, by their collective will, remove the holder of their office. Therefore, when seen outwardly, a ruler rules as one individual, but in reality that rule is that of the people. So we're not really dealing with uh, masters of a house, a bait here, are we? We're dealing with an actual <coughs> king ruling over the people. The question still remains, who were the kings before Moses? When were the Bani Israel sovereign before Moses? The question remains. Next on mic. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Twenty-five. Okay, let me get this straight. Um, John 17 3 that declares the father as God right Muslim 25 John 17 3 declares the father as God correct wrong no <laughs> yes the only God yes 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 I understand that so the father is the only true God yes I know what the verse says yes okay so the father is the only God. So the father, he owns everything, right? If this father is God, he owns everything. He owns Muhammad, he owns you, he owns your mother, he owns your father. Because he, this is God. God is sovereign of everything, right? Uh, peace be to you. Okay, Muslim. So everybody is following, right? Yes. Okay, let's read in the same passage. Jesus is saying to this one God, read. All mine are yours. And yours are mine. All mine are yours, 
and yours are mine. So you're telling me that Jesus owns your parents? Jesus owns your father? Jesus owns your mother? Jesus owns you? Jesus owns Muhammad? Jesus owns everything? Wow. Wow. I don't know how you're gonna how you're gonna reconcile this with um, Islamic theology. <laughs> okay, now let's have a look at Athanasius. Athanasius, you're appealing to Athanasius. Amazing. Let's see what he says in his creed. Shall I give you the Latin or the English? No, you don't understand Latin. Okay, English then. Whosoever will be saved before all things, it is necessary that he hold to the Catholic faith. Which faith except everyone do keep whole and undefiled, without doubt he shall perish everlastingly. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity, and Trinity in unity, neither, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the essence. For there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Ghost. But the Godhead of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost is all one, <coughs> the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Ghost. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, and the Holy Ghost uncreated. The Father unlimited, the Son unlimited, and the Holy Ghost unlimited. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, and the Holy Ghost eternal. And yet they are not three eternals, but one eternal. And as also there are not three uncreated, nor three infinite infinites but one uncreated and one infinite so likewise the father is almighty the son is almighty and the holy ghost is almighty and yet they are not three almighties but one almighty so the father is god the son is god and the holy ghost is god and yet they are not three gods but one god so likewise the father is lord the son is lord and the holy ghost is lord yet they are not three lords but one lord for like as we are uh now we have a christian up next at the mic jazakallah care for that i keep Disciple of the church, it's your mic. I come alaikum. Thank you for sharing with us, everyone. Uh, thank you, Abduha. Um, Prince Nasim, uh, Umda Asalik seems to disagree with you because under the heading of Ridda, it says a person can go out and come back and go out and come back and go out and come back and it will be accepted from him. So Umdat as salik seem to, seems to disagree with you and Umdat as salik is based on the agreed upon position, the Qawl of the Shafi'i Madhab based on the agreement of Imam Rafi'i and Imam and Nawawi. But I suppose both these Imams are not reliable, right? Yes, we only go to the uh, Salaf al-Salih, of course. So let's reject all of them. <laughs> now, uh, Farooq. Who is a Suddi? Farooq, who is a Suddi? Who is a Suddi? Um, Nakdimon gave you the translation. I gave you the Arabic text. You read it. Who is a Suddi? Come on, Google. Google now. Quick, 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 quick. Google. Google a Suddi. You don't know who a Suddi is. You see, Google, Google. Come on. Let me tell you who a Suddi is. Subhanallah. Saying Subhanallah will not give you information. You have to use Google. I'll tell you who Suddi is. A Suddi was Abu Muhammad. <coughs> excuse, not Abu Muhammad. Sorry, he was Muhammad bin Marwan bin Abdullah bin Ismail. He was of the Salaf al Saleh. He was of the Salaf al Saleh. What do you mean? <coughs> that uh, Ibn Kathir was simply give, giving his. Um, own interpretation. Are you t are you now telling us that Ibn Kathir was giving his um, tafsir his nafs and his desires? Hal huwa aftal min abbasi ani. Farooq. No, no, we're not comparing who's better than who. When <laughs> are we comparing who is better than who? Is that what we're doing? No, we are assessing your criterion. We are assessing your criterion now. Because you're saying, you're, you, you were rejecting the interpretation that was given by Ibn Kathir regarding the verse on Trinity because he does not quote from the Salaf. This is what you said. But I showed you that a Suddi is from the Salaf. So what are you talking about? What are you talking about? How much more time do I have? 
How much time do I still have? One minute. Okay. <laughs> so coming back, coming back to the historicity of um, the crucifixion, Farouk, you came on the mic twice already. I still do not have one name of a historian who rejects the crucifixion. Not one name. Why do you go to Ibn Abbas? Because he is very close to the information, the source, Muhammad, right? Okay. Well, we go to those closest to the information to Jesus. And those closest to what happened during the time of Jesus, every single one of them said he was crucified. Why are you not consistent? Why are you not consistent with your methodology? Time? Is it time? What duha? Is it time? Yes, okay. Salaf Yusuf, it's your mic. Actually, it's my mic. Salaam Um. Good morning. Did you know that Paul prophesied about the Prophet Muhammad? Did you know that? Did you know that? Good morning. That Paul prophesied about the Prophet Muhammad. It's really amazing. Yes, Paul, the Apostle Paul, he prophesied about the Prophet Muhammad. Did you know that? No. Hmm. Look at this. This is in Second Corinthians chapter number 11, verse number 14. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing, isn't it? The, the, that Paul actually prophesied about the Prophet Muhammad. <clears throat> regarding the divinity of Jesus, regarding the divinity of Jesus, good morning. I think, because if you are appealing to the New Testament, right, you're saying that, okay, Jesus, you're, we're worshipping a servant, because the New Testament says that. But then the New Testament also says in Titus chapter 2 verse number 13 that he is the great God, El Gibor, and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Does it not say that? Does it not say that? Good morning. Yes, of course it says that. <clears throat> but what I'm really interested in, good morning, is the title of the room, Examining the Crucifixion of Jesus. You claimed that there are two versions, one saying yes, one saying no. Can you please show me the version that says no? Yes, I did, Charles Martel. Good morning. Can you please show me the source where it says that Jesus was not actually crucified? What is the source? Are you going to start quoting the Docetists? How many times do we have to explain to you that the Docetists do not deny the crucifixion. They do believe that the crucifixion take, took place, but rather that it was an illusion because you can't